everyone. Are you enjoying this morning? It has been amazing so far. You know, one of the things that uh, one of the radio hosts that said to me is that spending day at a Black Health Summit is like having $5,000 worth of expertise at your fingertips for eight hours. So what a great value your time is being spent here. Now we wanna talk about endometrial cancer. According to research, racial disparity in endometrial cancer survival rates is, su is substantial and has increased during the past decade. Endometrial cancer is the most common gynecological cancer and is diagnosed in one in every 37 women in the United States. Black women with endometrial cancer have a 90% higher five-year mortality risk compared with white women. With a five-year mortality rate, 39% among Black women compared to 20% among white women. So there is a great disparity here, but we actually have a nationally recognized expert who's really going to talk to us about the stats and what can be done. Introducing Superstar, and I want to say that Dr. Carol Brown, our next presenter, will receive our first Black Health Matters Award for Physician Impact. And so that ceremony will be a little later this afternoon. So please join us. It's going to be a great ceremony. Now, let me tell you just a little about Dr. Brown. For more than two decades, Dr. Carol Brown, a gynecologic cancer su surgeon at Memorial Sloan Kettering, a cancer treatment and research institution in New York City, has used her surgical expertise to provide high quality and compassionate care to women with ovarian, uterine, cervical, and vulvar cancer. In addition to treating women with cancer, Dr. Brown has focused her career on the reduction and elimination of cancer health disparities experienced by medically underserved populations because she believes there is still much to learn about disparities in cancer care and how best to ensure every patient has access to high quality care and optimal outcomes, regardless of their background. And now it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Carol L. Brown. Good morning, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today to speak with you about endometrial cancer in the black community. My slides up. Um... Great, can everyone see my slides? Yes, all right. So endometrial cancer in the black community is what I'm gonna be speaking with you about today. Um, my motivation for talking to you about this today and really for my whole career is the issue as was mentioned about inequities in healthcare. And Martin Luther King said that of all the forms of injustice, inequality in healthcare is really the most shocking and I think we, we all realize that we live in a country that has the most advanced healthcare system in the world, and yet we still suffer many inequities due to the color of our skin, our gender, our uh, culture, our language, and this really is not a good way to be. So first I wanna talk about what is endometrial cancer? Well, first of all, it's the leading GYN cancer, the number one most common GYN cancer in the United States today. The number one symptom is abnormal bleeding. And it's not just bleeding when you finished having your periods. Women who have, are still getting their periods are at risk for endometrial cancer. And it's also the number one reason that women have biopsies done of the endometrium when they're over 40. So this is a cancer that's a cancer of the lining of the uterus, as you see displayed on this uh, picture. It's not a cancer of the muscle of the uterus, but the lining of the uterus that you shed every month. And it accounts for over 58%, more than half of the GYN cancer cases every year in the United States are from endometrial cancer. So who needs to get an endometrial biopsy? This is a very important message that I wanna get out to you before we get into the details of this talk. Everyone who has abnormal bleeding, that's the take home message, very important. If you're bleeding after you've stopped getting your periods, if you're around the age that you're gonna stop getting your periods, but you're having spotting or irregular bleeding, that's called perimenopausal bleeding. 
if you have irregular periods and you're in your late 30s or 40s and your bleeding is heavy, um, if you have postmenopausal bleeding and your pap smear shows endometrial cells, if you have an ultrasound and you're postmenopausal and it shows the lining of your uterus is very thickened, or if you're over 55 and you're still having your periods. So the reason I wanna emphasize this is that endometrial cancer can be detected early if the major symptom bleeding is investigated properly. So there are two types of endometrial cancer. There's a type one and a type two. Type one is the type that's usually caused and related to too much estrogen exposure over your lifetime. And type two is a type that's related more to um, aggressive cell types often known as papillary serous, uh, clear cell cell types. And this type two is very important because this is the type of endometrial cancer that black women are more likely to get. And we think that this is one of the reasons that black women suffer more from disparities in endometrial cancer. So the, now let's get into the point of the talk. And the point is for you to know that endometrial cancer, we have an epidemic of endometrial cancer in this country, and it is disproportionately affecting black women. The number of cases of endometrial cancer has increased by 57% in the last 10 years. This is not seen in any other GYN cancer. We also see that endometrial cancer has gone from being the number eight cause of cancer death in women in 2012 to being the number six cause of cancer death in women in 2016. And again, you can see on this chart, the leading causes of cancer deaths in women. This is really unprecedented for a cancer to move up in this way in terms of both the number of cases and the cause of death in women. Then this slide shows you that in particular for black women who are displayed in the blue uh, lines on these graphs, both the incidence, which is on the left side, that's the number of cases per 100,000 women and the mortality, which Rosalind mentioned earlier, which is the number of women who die per 100,000 in the population. If you look at the blue line, you see that the increase in both incidence and mortality for black women in the United States is rising over the last few years and it's rising at a much higher rate than it is for any other racial or ethnic group. So this is why my message today to you is that we seem to have an epidemic of endometrial cancer in this country and it seems to be disproportionately affecting the black population. So I wanna talk a little bit about equity and equality because what we want is health equity for black women and all black people with cancer. And equity means that you have an equal chance of getting the best outcome from your cancer because you are given the proper tools, which can be access, uh, genomic profiling, the right treatment to be able to reach that apple of the excellent outcome. No matter how tall you are, you get the right size box to reach the apple. Equality is very different. We're not talking about equality. We're not talking about everybody getting the same size box. We wanna make sure that the black population gets the right size box to meet their needs in order to have excellent cancer outcomes. So what are some of the challenges to getting health equity in cancer treatment? Well, there are a lot of factors. Some are related to the patients themselves, not meaning that it's the patient's fault, but things that are inherently part of the patient and who they are. And some are systems factors. And I'm gonna focus today on both areas, on some of the things that we can do to achieve health equity in endometrial cancer, but this is also applicable to other cancers by focusing on uh, personal characteristics of the patient, particularly the genomic profile of their cancer, as well as system factors in terms of access. So as Rosalind mentioned, there is a profound disparity and inequity in survival from endometrial cancer for black women in the United States. And this slide shows that. It shows you that over the last 40 years, the five-year survival rate for black women is about 20 to 22% lower than it is for white women, and this has not changed. This is data from Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, which shows you that the survival and the outcome for black and white women with endometrial cancer is basically the same. We do not see this gap for women who are treated at our center. 
Now, why is that? Well, I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but one of the programs that we have um, and one of the strategies to address these types of cancer inequities is to bring access to women, to patients with cancer, to the right type of treatment uh, and survivor and clinical trials. So I wanted to mention, uh, talk a little bit about the endometrial cancer equity program that we're launching at Memorial Sloan Kettering. This is a strategic initiative um, of the Office of Health Equity. And basically what we're gonna be doing is addressing um, the, the gap that you saw in survival for endometrial, for women, black women with endometrial cancer from a variety of standpoints. One, our ultimate goal is to reduce and eliminate this disparity. We want to find out, does the biology of the tumor explain why black women suffer more from endometrial cancer? We're going to have outreach, education, and screening for Black women who are at higher risk for endometrial cancer, both because of their race and because of their family history. And we're going to be making sure that Black women, like all women, are aware of the, their options for state-of-the-art treatment and participation in cancer clinical trials. And most importantly, we're going to be offering and making sure that Black women avail themselves of the amazing advance of tumor genomic profiling. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that in a minute. So, you know, as, as talks I've given at these sessions in past years, you know that I always focus on the importance and the power of clinical trials. So I wanna to talk to you right now about a clinical trial that has led to a standard of care related to that uh, tumor genomic profiling. So it's an approach to eliminating cancer disparities through research education, and that's how we can achieve health equity. So um, one of the reasons I think, remember I showed you this data that uterine cancer survival is worse for black women, but at Memorial Sloan Kettering, we seem to have equal outcomes. And one of the reasons we think we do is because one out of every three patients, no matter their race, ethnicity, no matter their socioeconomic status, the type of insurance they have, participates in a clinical trial. And we really believe, and I really believe that this makes the, a huge difference. So in terms of clinical trials for endometrial cancer, I wanna talk to you about the MSK Impact Program. And this is a program that uses our uh, FDA approved genomic sequencing test called MSK Impact to end cancer disparities. What, how the test is done is some of your blood is taken and the, some of samples from the, your cancer. And we do a test where we look at the DNA, both your DNA that you inherited from your parents and the DNA of your particular cancer. This is called precision medicine, which is one of the focuses of this whole day today. And we compare and look for any mutations that you may have inherited from your parents that predispose you to getting cancer, as well as your particular cancer's vulnerabilities in terms of mutations your cancer may have that may make it weak enough to be attacked by particular types of targeted therapies or immunotherapy. So we launched this uh, program as a clinical trial at many centers, including uh, our MSK sites in Manhattan and around uh, the area, but we also partnered with New York City Health and Hospitals cancer programs to deliver this really uh, impactful, no pun intended, uh, program to the most at-risk cancer patients of color and who also are the most at risk because of uh, their socioeconomic status and their lack of insurance to this program. And we found that this program was very well accepted. We have a very um, clear mission. And once we talk about the benefits of tumor genomic profiling, we found that people are very willing and eager to participate. And we've sequenced over 500 underserved patients through this program. So this is a slide that shows you a T cell which you're, I'm sure you're gonna hear more about T cells today because I know you're hearing about COVID and the immune system. So the T cell is something in your immune system. It's an important cell that helps defend you against coronavirus, but also helps defend you against cancer. And on the surface of the T cell are certain proteins or markers. And the way that uh, targeted therapy for endometrial cancer works and immunotherapy works is by um, binding to some of these markers, particularly the CTLA-4 and PD-1 proteins on the surface of the T cell to help the T cell work better 
or to block T cells that are working um, to suppress the immune system. So this is a slide that shows you uh, the, the initial results from a clinical trial that was done by MSK's own Dr. Vicki Macker, who is a woman of color, a scientist of color, who helped develop and helped get FDA approved um, two targeted therapies, a combination of immunotherapy and targeted therapy for women with endometrial cancer. And this is called a waterfall plot, meaning that the lower the bars go beneath the, the horizon, beneath the x-axis, is the amount of shrinkage of each tumor that you see there. And this phase two trial led to a national phase three trial that has recently led to the approval of two um, medications, an immunotherapy and a targeted therapy for women with advanced endometrial cancer. So this is an example of the importance of participating in clinical trials and the importance of availing yourself if you have cancer, particularly if you have endometrial cancer, of precision oncology to get tumor genomic sequencing done. So the things I wanna leave you with today are that uterine cancer, endometrial cancer is the fastest growing cancer in women. The incidence is increasing one to 2% per year in women younger than 50 years old. Black women have a lower survival than any other groups. Differences in tumor biology may explain the black white cancer disparity. All patients who with endometrial cancer, particularly black women, need to have avail themselves of tumor genomic profiling and evalu evaluation of their cancers genetic um, and immunotherapy susceptibility. Uh, and um, I'm going to leave you um, there and we will take uh, any questions. So I'm looking uh, at the Q&A and um, there is one question, how can you find out if you have endometrial cancer? And is this what a pap smear is for? So that's an excellent question. Um, the pap smear is not de de uh, designed to detect endometrial cancer. But as I mentioned earlier, if you are if you finished having your periods and your pap smear comes back showing cells from the lining of the uterus, that could mean you have endometrial cancer. Another question, can you have just one of these symptoms and qualify for a biopsy? The answer is yes, really. If you have irregular or abnormal bleeding and you're over 40, then you really should have an endometrial biopsy. And that's something you can advocate for with your uh, gynecologist. Why are there so many different types of cancer now that there weren't around years ago? Actually, they were around years ago. We just did not have the technology and the ability to detect them. And then, um, what percentage of our diet contributes to the different types of cancer today? Um, I think that diet plays a role in endometrial cancer because of the issue of, of estrogen exposure and obesity. So over the years, um, if, you, if we have been exposed to estrogen in our food sources, like chicken, beef that has been treated with hormones and antibiotics, this can increase our risk of endometrial cancer. So it's been shown that diets that are low in fat can really, an exercise can reduce your risk and improve your survival from endometrial cancer. Um, uh, there's a question, how can I get an appointment? And I would say in answer to this question, as well as any other questions you have, because we have to wrap up now, please visit the Memorial Sloan Kettering booth um, in the exhibit hall. And uh, there's information there about how to access our services. And we also can answer any further questions uh, that you have. Um, so I wanna thank everyone so much uh, for your time today and have a great day at the Black Health Matters Summit. And remember, visit the Memorial Sloan Kettering booth. Thank you.